Hi, I'm Mark Walker. I'm the editorial director of the Fintech Times, and we're here at Seamless Middle East in Dubai. Perhaps you could start off by introducing yourself to our audience, please. Thanks, Mark. I'm Dima Katz. I'm the founder and the CEO of Clear Junction. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us here. Um, let's start off a little bit. Tell us a little bit about Clear Junction. What, what do you do and uh, how do you work in the financial services arena? Okay. So Clear Junction is a financial business uh, headquartered in London. Uh, we have our electronic money license uh, from FCA in London. And what we do is cross-border payments. Now what's uh, really unusual or unique about us is that we don't serve retail and we don't serve corporate clients, we serve institutions. So all our clients are financial institutions, uh, remittance companies, payment service providers, banks, and similar types of regulated entities. So basically speaking of seamless, this whole uh, bunch of people, about a thousand companies, they are potential clients for us because all of them are financial institutions. Okay, it's interesting. And I guess obviously, as you said, you know, based in the UK, obviously have quite a big presence in Europe. What brings you out here to the Middle East? Uh, well, I said that we uh, provide the cross-border payment services. Uh, that's the essence, essence of it. Um, uh, obviously, all these companies that come here, they need services in euros, pounds, dollars, and the major currencies. Uh, so um, this is definitely one of those uh, markets where uh, we come to to meet the potential clients. That's uh, that's why we're here. Yeah, and as you say, you, you pretty much uh, work with any banking institution or anything else. What, what's the, the main focus? No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't work with any. We work only with those. I mean, it's 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 interesting. Uh, um, there is um, what we do is generally called the correspondent account services. Right? When two banks work together, it's called a correspondent account. That type of relationship is, is called a correspondent account. Now, banks uh, are very selective in who they are willing to work with, and, uh, and so are we. So we will only work with those uh, who meet our risk management uh, expectations. Yeah, okay. that, that was kind of what I was leading to, is that you could work with any. How, how do you choose which banks you want to work with? Uh, well, it's, uh, um, it's simple. I mean, it all starts from the, really the, uh, the risk assessment. Um, if uh, from the risk perspective, uh, we feel that we are comfortable with the, um, uh, the operations of that potential client of ours, then obviously we can have the commercial discussion. Uh, but uh, it all starts with the risks. Okay, and that's fine. And in many cases, it ends with the risks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, more likely ends with the risks yeah, side of things yeah, as well. Yeah. So, so thinking about sort of risks and sort of obviously um, working with so many different types of, of banks and, and people, you must have an understanding of the regulatory landscape in different areas. Right. How do you find the, uh, the regulation, say, here in the UAE compares with, say, the, the UK regulation? Well, interesting. Uh, um, uh, there is this um, so-called... Uh, um, DIFC uh, area um, where the uh, regulatory regime is very similar to the one that we see in the, in, in the UK. Uh, and it seems like um, there are many people employed here by the local regulator who uh, spend some time in FCA uh, in the UK. So we do see a lot of uh, uh, similarities between uh, what we are used to um, from London, uh, also implemented here. Okay, interesting. And I guess from, from your perspective, how would you see sort of the trends of sort of payment systems and that moving forward into 2024? What, what are the sort of the key things that you're seeing? I think um, the key trends, they are a reflection of what we see in general around us in this world. And we see more polarization, we see more radicalization and that is definitely reflected in how this industry works. So um, taking risks becomes riskier, okay? And the potential cost of a, of a mistake becomes higher. Um, so it just, it's just, um, that's, I'd say that, that that's the trend that I see. That it's just uh, you just need to be even more careful uh, in doing your due diligence on um, 
counterparties on the traffic that uh, you uh, entertain. You need to um, be more cautious um, in finding the uh, clients and the providers. Um, so, I mean, I'm sorry, I can't give you some specific trend, but it's just it's just getting uh, harder and harder, and and, and we we'll, we'll like it. I mean, it's a it's a challenge, hmm. but it is definitely a reflection of what we see outside in the in the outside world, uh, more radicalization in the world. I think so um, obviously, you know, the term we ter call reg tech. We've seen quite an explosion yeah. of reg, reg tech sort of companies and innovation in that area in the last couple of years right. to combat effectively what you're saying, that increased risk and that uh, increased uncertainty and geopolitical risk, as it were. Yeah, but very much so. Yeah, definitely uh, all these uh, new solutions based on some uh, innovative technology, we can't ignore that and, uh, and none of our peers can ignore that. So basically, if there is some new, uh, what you call it, reg tech uh, service, in many cases, banks and financial institutions, they just can't afford not um, having, uh, giving that a chance. Okay, uh, again, from the, from the same perspective of uh, the, the major objective is to build the um, very efficient risk management um, capabilities. Right, and, you, and, you, and it's, it's, it's a never-ending game, and you, 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 you keep doing it again and again and again. And you, you keep improving that all the time, and all these reg tech solutions uh, is just one of the ways to use the technology. And, and, and again, yeah, we just we, none of this industry in this uh, industry can really uh, afford ignoring that. So every innovative solution will um, will be reviewed by the uh, potential client. Yeah, and I guess final question. Obviously, we're here at Seamless uh, Middle East. Um, talking of innovation, have you seen anything? Have you heard anything over the last day and a half that you've gone, "Oh, that's interesting. That's new. That's something I wasn't aware of." Well, I, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there is something revolutionary. What I would say is that I definitely see uh, that some of our assumptions are being confirmed. Um, so. Um, one of the directions that um, we selected for the company is that in addition to the traditional correspondent account services that uh, I just uh, explained uh, briefly here, uh, we are going to introduce uh, an ability for our clients to use um, the cryptocurrency, the, the stable coins, um, for some of their um, um, uh, liquidity transfers. Uh, so we've been running with that assumption for quite some time. Now, um, it was good to see here at this conference that people come to us and they, they ask the question when they can use our services um, to enable their uh, crypto um, uh, transactions. Okay, okay so that's, that, that was really, uh, it's definitely uh, one of the conclusions uh, for me from this um, uh, conference. Fantastic. Thank you so much for spending time with me at Seamless TV, powered by the FinTech Times. Thank you, Mark.